What's up YouTube, Snatch Pato here with another video about chess tactics. Um, as you know, if you've watched these before, I spent quite a bit of time on these tactics. So I'm changing that up because I learned something recently from International Master David Proust. He said something about when you're doing tactics, you should try and then solve them within 30 seconds or so. Because if you can't, then you obviously can't see the pattern. And solving tactics is all about pattern recognition. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the blitz uh, tactic problem set on chesstempo.com and if I don't find them within about 30 seconds I'm just gonna do my best guess I'm not gonna try and calculate the entire forcing line and I'm gonna do this a, a lot so we can a get more tactics done and B we can try and really enforce that pattern recognition not our calculation our calculation can come from other practice and calculation drills but for now I'm gonna try and improve my tactical pattern recognition so let's go start so about 20 to 30 seconds i give myself got to wait for their move though i'm black uh okay so what are we looking at here this pawn's weak um we can double attack the queen and the knight after the knight moves we got nothing maybe bishop takes hitting this pawn um we can what so this is what i mean uh usually i would sit here figuring out this tactic for a long time but for now, we probably don't have that long, but what about just rook to g3, deflecting the queen away from either the knight or the rook? That looks pretty good to me. Queen takes here, I take, and I win an exchange because the rook's traded for the bishop. So that's good. Let's go next problem. Try and really power through these, you know. So I'm hitting the queen. The queen's going to probably move, and we're going to find a tactic after that. <clears throat> so I'm checked instead. Um, now bishop just takes pawn, and I'll still be double attacking the queen and the knight. Um... If pawn pushes though, I suspect bishop check, pawn push again, doesn't really work for me. I could also um, take with my king, because I think if I take with my bishop, the pawn push he, like gives him time for me to like move my bishop, and then he'll have to be able to move his knight. So I think taking with my king, and I can't see anything f that's really dooming me. Okay, so that was wrong. So it... His king takes knight. Ah, because my bishop's of course defended by my queen. So that's what I didn't notice. <laughs> the fact that my bishop is actually protected by my queen. Or I, I think I noticed it. I just didn't really you know, accept or acknowledge how strong it is. Um, bishop takes is probably fine, but after d5, bishop b5, c6, and knight d4 apparently. But yeah, this is the part where I got a bit fuzzy and hazy and I didn't realize how I could save my piece. But pretty simple. Oops. Um, yep, just take the knight because your bishop is defended. Next problem. See, we're getting much faster through these tactics now. I usually spend eight minutes on one tactic. <laughs> this bishop's pinned. So rook takes h6. Bishop, uh, king takes h6. Queen h3 check. King must play to g5. And what? I don't see it. I don't see what I can do on, when he's on g5. Uh, is there a way to win this queen? I don't see that. Look h6, king h6. Queen h3, check, king g5. So this is the calculation. But I mean, I've seen, hopefully, the pattern recognition of taking on h6 to bait the king out. And now it is, you do have to do some calculation. You can't just always not do any. I got a queen check on e3. So king goes to h5, probably knight check is mating. Uh, hmm. Queen check, king goes here. I don't really see what I got. So, is there something else that we can exploit here? This knight's probably got to come into it someplace. Maybe knight d4 hitting the queen, using that as a tempo for fork here. That looks pretty good. There we go. I'll probably just take that queen because I was in check. There we go. So from that, I've learned, and hopefully you learned as well, yes, seeing something is fine, but if you really can't calculate something forcing, especially in these blitz tactics, um, look for something else because we could have spent, and I probably would have if we were taking our time like in all the other videos, I probably would have spent, you know, five or six minutes trying to calculate a forcing mate when there was none. So 
looking for these other candidate moves. Getting a tempo on the queen with knight here. Wherever the queen moves, then you've got this fork. And this bishop's pinned. So that is a big threat. If king plays here, that's me. So, next problem. We're getting them thick and fast here. Maybe two more tactics. Keep this video relatively short. Okay, this pawn's loose. Um, we can potentially threaten mates here in some way. Uh, queen here forces the trade of queens, because otherwise it's mate probably, or the queen hangs. Is that worth anything? Probably not. Uh, we can probably play rook to d8 check. If the king plays to h7, queen e4 check. g6, hg, hg, uh, hg, fg. I can't imagine that the king running away is going to be very good for him. So queen takes d8, then I've got queen to e5. Threatening mate, f6. Queen takes e6, check. Um, doesn't seem to be working. Is there a way I can gain a tempo on this rook? Or something? Don't think so. Uh, I don't want to spend too long again. This is all about pattern recognition. And I can't find anything. We've been thinking for a minute, so I'm just going to have to go for something here. It's almost certainly going to be wrong because I can't actually calculate anything. Uh, let's just go for rook d8, trying to deflect the queen. It's no good. Queen d2. Threatening this check, I suppose. Is there another threat in the position that queen d2 brings? Knight d5 for the computer play, so it must be a serious threat. What's wrong with rook a8? I don't s ah, the threat is actually rook to d7, not rook d8. So the big threat is the fork on d7. Um, okay, this knight doesn't really have any squares if it goes to c8. Potentially just uh, rook check, king here, and then rook takes, queen takes, and then queen check here. Picking up the rook. That looks pretty good to me. So that's probably... The reason why the rook knight can't go to c8, and where else can the knight go? You could probably play rook a7, I suppose. Check, king h7, check, and that's mate. That's the other reason why you can't play rook a7. Okay, so there was actually that was actually quite in depth, that tactic. There was a few lines you had to calculate, and why black can't defend in certain ways. This is probably possible, though. Uh, should probably calculate this. Takes, knight takes. Huh. Maybe after f5, there's... Hmm, actually. Anyway, I don't want to go for too long, but that is worth analysing. I might come back to that tactic in the future. We'll do one more before this video wraps up. And we are black to play here. Already thinking about rook g6 stuff. Threatening this pawn bishop can't block because there's a pin on the g file. Um, f3. Potentially runs into knight to e3. Hitting the knight, hitting the rook and still hitting g2. So g6 looks good. Quickly check if there's nothing else. I just thought I'd play it. Pattern recognition. We've got to improve it. Why does uh, rook g6 not work? It's not even one of the computer's main moves. No, the move is knight to d4. Hitting the undefended bishop. Uh, this end uh, getting in the way of that. And I suppose knight takes d4. E takes d4. And now the bishop's hit. Both bishops are hit by the rook, actually. You can defend your dark squared bishop with this rook capture, but this bishop falls. And... Um, yeah, that's it. I suppose after knight here, potentially you could play... Yeah, and the problem is you can't just defend your light squared bishop, because not only is it check deflecting the rook, and you can take the bishop, but you don't even have to take the bishop. You just take this one. And that's up a piece. So it's an interference tactic, this one. The pattern recognition aspect that I want to improve on for this one is seeing that this piece is pretty much undefended. Uh, it's only defended by the rook, and how can I deflect the rook? There's no way right now, but I can interfere with it. The only other thing is, 
if knight takes, pawn takes is the move, not taking the bishop because we want to be able to attack this bishop again. And there's no Zwish, uh, there's no Zwish in Zook like this because we can just take the bishop. That's the threat. Cool. All right, I think I might wrap that one up here. Uh, hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this style of tactics training as opposed to the other ones I do. Uh, I'm not always only going to do this because I do like to improve my calculation as well. So I will be still doing my longer tactical training, doing a lot of calculation, finding the absolute forcing lines. But this is also quite fun and probably good for me um, to get a few tactics wrong, but do them quickly and f realize why I got them wrong. For this, for this example, I got way too focused on G2. And it, it, while it looks strong to me, there's a much stronger, obviously, move like this. And that's the patterns I need to see more quickly, I suppose. Um, but that's it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give the video a thumbs up. Share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know whether you liked it in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Make sure you always stay classy. Peace! Catch the kiss.